Hey. It's good <laughs> hey, to Jim. see you. It's good to see you. Let me just click got it. There we go. Oh, that it lets you know that I'm recording. It really lets you know there must be a problem with people not realizing that meetings have started. And uh, so they put a big thing in the middle of the screen. It's like, hey, your meeting started. It's being recorded. Yeah. If you don't want it recorded. Yeah. Uh, it could be Tubin's law. What's Tubin's law? Oh, Jeffrey Tubin. Surely you remember. No. Jeffrey Tubin, the CNN pundit who uh, was uh, masturbating on a Zoom oh, meeting. Right. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. then had to go away for three months. Yeah. Then he's back on TV. And you know what he did for those three months? We all know what he did for those oh, three Oh, man. Months. They were like, make sure you burn it out before you come back. And he said, no problem. And they went, hey, you didn't have to answer us this way. Huh. <laughs> or stop sending videos. Can you give, can you give me four months? <laughs> <laughs> I got some ideas. Got some things <laughs> I want to try. Some things I want to try. Stuff I want to look at. Yeah. Thinking overhand. <laughs> 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 I just, yeah, that, yeah. You know, Impressive. <laughs> we can make that work. Four months. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what not what this is about. No, that's the other show. Yeah. That's the other show. This, on the other hand, is episode 42. Wow. Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. And you know all about the number 42. Yes. The uh, secret, the uh, answer to life, the universe, and everything, right? That's right. Yeah. Also, Mulder's apartment number oh. on the X Files. I don't think I did know that. I should. I don't feel like that's a real apartment number. Uh, yeah, because... that's a big building. It's, yeah. And also, is that on the fourth floor? Oh, I yeah. Like it be 442 yeah i think they just do uh number and letter in most well this is a whole other problem <laughs> <laughs> hey so i was looking at uh earlier episodes because i did this thing that's very i imagine lots of people do this but for sure i do it the first five episodes of our show are just Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics, episode one, episode two. One of them, I put the number, and the other one, one I spell it. Oh. So many different ways you could do that. Just do one. <laughs> um, but the other thing of those five episodes is that they're called Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics, episode one, but there's no colon this is the song of the episode uh, well, well it leaves them wanting more yeah so i leave that in the description and then i come to find out oh so even if i want to know what we talked about <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i wanted to know um if there was the song that i want to pick i was like oh, it feels like we have talked about it no, we have not. Huh. No, we haven't. So that's good. And then I watched a little bit of episode five. That's yeah. a little bit. And I found it funny when both of us were like, wow, five episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were can so you, innocent. Can you believe we've done this five times? That seems like a lot. We said. It's made. Yeah. It's like a kid with a birthday. Can you believe I'm six? <laughs> I'm so old. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I've been around forever. Old as the hills. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, we were unvaccinated then, probably. Uh, yeah, for sure. We were unvaccinated. <laughs> yeah. And I still I'm am, but I've had that. I, I'm still unvaccinated, but I've had that horse stuff. Oh, you're good then. Yeah. Well, you have that alt-right radio show to take care of. <laughs> exactly, the other show. <laughs> a friend of mine who's a, a comic friend of mine talks about those lists where you'll see a list and it'll say, 
you won't believe what kind of house Ricky Schroeder lives in. It'll be some clickbait article. Right. And then it'll just be a picture of a house. <laughs> right. And he says, I could believe that. I could believe he lives in a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does okay for himself. Yeah. Makes sense to me. And it's never, it's not like a house that's used to be a rocket ship, because I wouldn't, I'd be surprised. It was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Or, or like if, the Silver Spoons train. Yeah. Yeah. It's, train. <laughs> yeah. it's just you know a, the, the list that always drives me nuts. Uh, it makes me angry, even though it's just written down on paper or on a digital screen, is when they'll say, like, 10 things you didn't know about Billy Joel. I'll be like, you don't know what I know. Yeah. And you, this article's calling me stupid. And a lot of them are not impressive things. Yeah, no. Like, he's from New York. I'm like, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Maybe Billy's number seven, I forgot. Yeah. And there's usually one thing on there that, no, I didn't know that, and I shouldn't know that. It's like, Billy Joel's type O. Yeah, Need that to goes on the 10 things you couldn't have known. Yeah. And we're sorry to bother you with. And things you shouldn't know if his doctor was doing his job. Not supposed to tell me. He's not supposed to let me know Billy Joel's blood. That's HIPAA. Yeah. You're, viola you're violating HIPAA. Oh, uh, that'd be a funny bit. Ten things you sh you shouldn't know, and we shouldn't tell you because it's unethical. But here, and just <laughs> but here, here's some X-rays. <laughs> you can't just put. <laughs> uh, I think that when I'm watching football and they're talking very explicitly about someone's injury, yeah, like is this? Are they allowed to do that? I yeah, if they have to sign a release and go, yes, you can tell America about my shattered tibia it ha i'm gonna guess because the person is a person but they're also a commodity in that context right and it's, something got signed along yeah. the way well and they, but even if they didn't because they're participating in a something of national interest their tibia is more interesting than your tibia right i'm sorry i shouldn't have said that your tibia is no 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 it's, you know, you're the third person today, but <laughs> I'm going to find a way. Your to tibia. Move yeah. Your tibia matters to you. Yeah. I, well, we always, in my house, we say all tibias matter. <laughs> you're <laughs> a strangely specific problematic household. <laughs> yeah. It, to the point where it hasn't come up. Yeah. You have not got canceled for that. No, no one's yet. sure how to do it. Yeah. I'm like, having an osteopath over next week, so I hope there might be a skirmish. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, you picked this song, and because um, that's what we do. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I led into it as, as if you had done something wrong or out of sorts. <laughs> hey. We're, we're holding this Zoom meeting because you picked this song. Yeah. Now I have to talk about it. Why did you pick a song? That's what we do. And you picked Half a Mile Away. And I know I had heard this. I've heard the song plenty, but for sure I hadn't heard it in a long time. Yeah. And what a lovely song. What a lovely song. Brisk and upbeat. And I don't say this often because it's not often something that you would say about a Billy Joel song. I really like his vocals a lot on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was really uh, in good voice. Yes. And he's doing a couple of vocal tricks that can sound ridiculous if he doesn't do them right. Yes. A little, uh, is it head voice or falsetto? Yeah, um, I, I think falsetto would be, uh, were all those the same thing? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody in the comments, tell us and make fun of us for not knowing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to let them do the second part or they won't do the first. Yeah, but uh, it's quite lovely and it happens kind of 
early in the song. It, he doesn't wait a, a but it's not at the beginning, but it's also not like smack dab in the middle. Right. And that feels different. That feels like I don't not unexpected because I expected a song. <laughs> You're but, getting good at this. Yeah, but it was neat. It was just a different way to arrange the song. Amen. Yeah. And it's not like a lot of the vocal tricks he does or the sound effects where it's really calls attention to itself. Yeah. It's just like, oh no, this is just part of what I'm doing. Yeah. It almost feels like a thing that will happen where in in many art forms where he was just singing. He wasn't being super self-conscious and a nice thing happened in the studio. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I'll bet there are a lot of uh, versions because you could go at this a lot of ways, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Just a perfectly lovely song. I don't think it ever charted. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, is it like really friendly, I would think. Is it like anything? I wasn't sure. Is it a style? <laughs> it must be a style. Is it? Is it's not? It's not fifties or sixties at all, is it? It felt a little bit like it. You no, know, I mean I feel like it was a good uh, compilation of elements. Yeah. There's you know there's some R and B in it. Obviously there's some like. 50s style singing with the falsetto yeah frankie valley i think he just like used his toolkit in a nice yeah. way um but speaking of styles can i have to briefly interrupt our our flow to tell you about this uh absurd person okay um we went we played golf out on long island pretty close to i would say billy joel's hometown we were pretty close to hicksville Sure. Uh, in Oceanside. The guy we're playing with kept recommending that we go to this restaurant nearby afterwards because they have the best steak sandwich in the world. So we, okay, we're like, okay, we finally, we're like, okay, we're going to go after golf and we'll go to Jimmy Hayes. Um, it was little, so we walk into this place. It's just like a little restaurant on a strip. Um, we walk in, it's broad daylight outside, but you couldn't see your hand in front of your face inside. <laughs> Sure. Dark wood everywhere, dark wallpaper, a bunch of people in their 60s and 70s sitting around the bar. It was very Long Island. We sit at a table, red checkered tablecloth, of course. <laughs> yeah. This dude comes over <laughs> who was, was the maitre d'. He was like the guy who seated us, like all of which was like, this place ain't nice enough for a maitre d or for waiters with ties on right but they had all that stuff um and so the maitre d comes over he's got a blazer on that's four sizes too big oh, great. like oak bottle glasses he, he's like five four maybe first thing he says to us as we're seated is this tell me what how your reaction would go so uh what kind of style you like? Yeah, that's what we said and did. Like, what? what? So I say, what? He said, oh, what kind of style you like? I'm like again, style of what? New wave. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Pointillism. Uh, mid-century modern uh, finally he goes red white so wine comes in styles <laughs> in long island it was just my favorite sentence of the last two weeks and i said to sue i was like that is a perfect ready-made snl catchphrase yeah i don't know what the sketch is <laughs> But what kind of style you like? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if there would be a person who would come in and would know. They would go red. 
they'd say, because they know we're talking, oh, style, well, he must be talking about wine. No. I mean, like high waisted jeans, or do you like the low cut? (laughs) It was really, it was so baffling and such a great character. That's great. The other one I've heard in reference to wine that if you don't clarify, doesn't make any sense is I've had somebody ask uh, what flavor I want. And that's (laughs) a dumb way to say it too. That's a real dumb way. Yeah. That, there was no maitre d' at that place, probably. No, just a waiter. <laughs> Flavor. But it's also just silly, because... Grape. Grape, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor. Wow. Oh, that's pretty great. Uh, when you ask for a Gatorade at the golf course, they always say, what color? So I don't know that everyone knows the flavors that match the colors, but you can certainly see the colors. Yeah. That's, no, that's just efficient. Yep. And and it's contextualized. You've asked for a Gatorade. That's <laughs> true. Yes, we, we're on a path of some kind. Yeah. The Mater D didn't go, what color? And you went, is this place? <laughs> mm, mm. Is this place just racist? <laughs> What's going on? Well, yes, but not just. <laughs> not just that's great <laughs> uh, that's fantastic that's dumb and crazy and dumb wow. and delightful wow <laughs> so yeah what kind of style is this i think it's like accessible jazz <laughs> sort of i mean it's 52nd street which is a, a lot of it is that um was very jazzy yeah and it's like spanish jazz but this seems like a little more mainstream. Jazz rock, is that a thing? Can you just put hyphens between any two words? I, I think, yeah, I think you can. I think everyone does that constantly. Um, and there probably is something called jazz rock and I bet it's bad. I bet most of it's bad, but some of it's probably like Steely Dan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but a lot of it is like, they think it's jazz. Yeah. And that's the problem with people who know a little jazz is they yeah. think, it, oh, it's everywhere. No. And people who know better say stuff like, it isn't even rock at this point because it's neither thing now. Right. Yes. You broke two things. Yeah. It's just more or less bad is what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It's out. Well, that, and you had a couple of weeks off, which was nice. Yeah, a delight. I also had a couple of weeks off because I didn't do the show while you were gone. Okay, yeah. but that's a choice. Yeah, <laughs> that's why but you're not like your job, right? That's why I'm not like saying episode eighty eight, and you're like Jesus, you crammed a bunch in. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> you know all all the songs I talked about by myself. <laughs> Just into a, into a, the Zoom God, camera. I'd watch that show. I uh, I do have a few little things I do occasionally, like that are just me. Though, like the movie review, when should I pee? I did it's just <laughs> me, and uh, right. and then a bunch of just nonsense videos. My my reboot of that's a very funny video. I did this reboot of the Twilight Zone. And all it is is me dubbing over Rod Serling's part. That's it. That's the only change. Great. So you know the glasses episode where sure. famous glasses episode. It's just me going, aha, stupid nerd broke his fucking glasses. Reading is stupid. <laughs> So is that all that's posted is you dubbing Rod Serling or is the whole episode posted? I, and we have I, to wait for you. I wish I had the courage to do that version because I think that version's amazing, but you can't count on people watching the whole thing. No, you really can't. Although that one's a good one. That's a gripping one. Yeah. And that they would be super extra mad at you though. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody loved it, then I would have to do them all, which would be great. Oh, what a great punishment. Yeah. And there would be a couple ones where it would just be be going, yeah, this one's not a good one, right? I'm Rod Serling. (laughs) Right. 
This one tried to be romantic. Yeah. Spooky. This one makes Africa seem scary. And it uses <laughs> Africa as the villain. And I don't like this episode. <laughs> Just the idea of Africa is the villain. Yeah. You seen that one? It sounds familiar. I'm sure I have. I've seen them all. Yeah, and there's jungle drums and a lot of uh, problematic yeah, the... things in it. <laughs> uh, Back when people were like, you know, Africa where there's no cities, it's just jungles. Yeah, yeah. People don't use plates or anything there as far as we're depicting. <laughs> all right. Each other, though. <laughs> All right, so you picked Half a Mile Away is the song you picked. I did. And uh, it's a nice song, and I don't have very many complaints about it, which is odd. Uh, <laughs> so let's... Maybe we can scare some up. <laughs> let's get into this one. And as you observed before, it's a brisk song, so not a lot of lyrics, but plenty. Plenty, uh, enough. Yep. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and start? All right. Little Geo is a friend of mine. We get some money and we buy a cheap wine. So Sit Geo up. does not get you your drinks for free. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is uh, not, not one of his better friends, I guess. Um, I do love Geo as a nickname. Me George. too. Don't I remember it when I was a kid? The guy who ran the bowling alley was a geo, yeah. And I don't think I've heard it since. I'm it's super cool, it's a really cool nickname for a really uh nerdy name, yep. And uh, I knew a geo, and that was his given name. Wow, Japanese fella, okay, yeah, a little different origin story, yeah. <laughs> Was he a friend of yours? Oh uh, yeah, very nice fellow. Um, Great, so you can really relate to this first line. Oh yeah, um, he was tall though. Ah. Oh, could be ironic, little Geo. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> Geo was a six footer. Wow. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> Little Gio is a friend of mine. We get some money and we buy a cheap wine. Sit on the corner and have a holiday. Which is a little British. Yeah. Um, shall I keep going? Um, I, I like have a holiday as well. I just like what you're saying. I like the idea of just talking about getting drunk as we're, we're having this. The, calling that a holiday is just funny to me. <laughs> the, the thing to do where you take a break from everything and just to, I like those moments when you've decided to get drunk versus the times when you accidentally got drunk yes much more efficient I did a lot of the latter in the last couple of weeks yeah oh we're gonna go you know we'll have a couple of cocktails and we'll go to dinner and then we arrive at dinner so drunk <laughs> This isn't now. I hate sitting down. I have to drink more booze because it's dinner. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did a lot of the, but this is great. Like, we're gonna first of all, they have to get some money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that phrase too because you're squirreling away money or you're, you're, you're going to a change jar. Right. I feel like they're stealing. In this case, I think they're underage. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, that makes that that tracks. Comes up later. Yeah. Um, so they have to like probably steal some money out of mom's purse. Yeah. Buy a cheap wine, sit on the corner, and have a holiday. I mean, it does sound great as far as like teen drinking hijinks. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, fantastic. And you're dumb and you're you're gonna both finish the bottle and throw it up fairly quickly. Yep. Go to school with a giant headache. Yep. Oh, uh, shall I continue? Oh yeah, you do the first this first chunk and I'll do the next chunk. All right. 
Hide the bottle when the cop goes by. Fantastic. Yeah. Talk about women and lie, lie, lie. Great. Great. Oh, my other world is just a half a mile away. Closest thing to any darkness is <laughs> in this song, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that he needs another world to yeah. escape to. Yeah. Um, which, you know, you don't necessarily, not necessarily. <laughs> um, dark. I think no matter if, no matter how well things are going in your life, you need a little place to escape to. Yeah, and since uh, he's young, the world he's escaping from is probably home. Yeah, um, homework, rules, and stuff. Yeah, although we know what his relationship's like with his mom. We talked about that in another episode, so could be a dark episode. <laughs> That's true. Could be dark in that sense. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, wait for Mama to turn out the light. Ah, uh -huh. crawl on the roof, and then I hit the night. Man, right. that is suburban as hell. Because you got the kind of home where you can crawl out a window onto the roof. So hit night. Yeah. So that's a house. That's a nice house. That's very picturesque. Sounds that's like not a house. an apartment. <laughs> Yeah, this sounds like uh, the old days in Hicksville, probably. Yep. Um, I love the phrase hit the night because A, it's jazzed. It's yeah. a very jazzed thing to say. And the and B is uh, it's very superhero. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's super superhero. It's uh, Peter Parker. Yeah. Peter Parker out the window. Yeah. And in fact, Peter Parker would have grown up, oddly enough, Probably in Billy Joel's neighborhood. Oh, yeah, that's true, right? That's canon, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's canon, baby. That's right. Billy oh. Joel could have been. So Billy Joel, by the way, if he knew Peter Parker, Billy Joel would have been one of the dicks who made fun of him. Oh, absolutely. Billy Joel would have, would have spent half of his teenage years upside down in a web. That's right, because he was... Billy Joel would have been friends with Flash Thompson. Oh, man. And he'd regret it later. You know, that guy was actually kind of a jerk. But he'd have been all in. Yep. And he would have changed his name. And by the way, that's a bit of trivia. He changed the name and that was Eddie. Flash Thompson was Eddie. Huh. So wrong side of history. Flash Thompson, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I should be sleeping, but tonight I just can't stay. I've given everybody so much time. Now I need a moment that's mine. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's a weird teen sentiment. Yeah. That sounds like a, a spouse. Yeah. Or somebody who has some uh power in the household decisions <laughs> well but let's go back to that song we talked about before and what we know about billy joel the only song with the word fuck in it true so That's true if you got that kind of relationship with your ma then right. even as a kid you're being demanded too much of your time yeah doesn't sound like dad's around yeah and okay. uh and you're and there's a reason you're going out drinking other than that you're a kid and you think that would be neat you know one of those kids who's like split in the parental role yeah who's spending too much time making sure stuff happens at home because it'll fall apart if they don't right yeah i had, one of my siblings was that person i for sure wasn't um it's great that that's present sort yeah. of in the song but it's not the point yeah, true. Yeah, this is about uh, the nice thing that I get to go do. <laughs> yes, it's yeah, that's true. It. Just thinking thinking about why he wrote the lyric the way he wrote is all I'm saying, really. Yes. I'm giving everybody so much time, now I need a moment that's mine. It's uh, a nice bit of color. Yeah. Oh, my other world is just a half mile away. So I like the switch, by the way. So the first one is, 
I'm, I'm in the world I want to be in, and the terrible one is a half mile away. And here, I'm on my way to the cool place. Oh, my yeah. other world is a half mile away. It's just a half mile away. That's, see, as someone who lives in New York, that is proof that this is in the suburbs. Because in the city, you would never say it's just a half mile. Because a half mile is a long way to go in the city. That's true. Um, <laughs> we drove to the golf course today. It was three miles, and it took 45 minutes. Yeah. And we almost died six times. <laughs> uh, and other people <laughs> almost died a few times. And, and you would also wouldn't do uh, just a half mile. It would be uh, 10 blocks. Right. Or some other unit of measurement. Yeah. Um, and you, you get, yeah. And you get popped in the mouth. Back the way. <laughs> you get popped in the mouth if you went. Yeah, it was just a half mile away. Ah, shut up. It's a terrible drive. What are you here? <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> All right. I think I think this is you. Just, all right angelina save a place for me a new character yeah who the fuck is angelina <laughs> there really is no clue now that is stone cold true there you could not unless he's talking about angeline in la and he's not <laughs> don't think so that's funny when you look at it that way because there's missing song here then <laughs> there is or it's he's maybe just meaning to paint a, a very broad picture yeah i mean what we know about her is she's got a place for him um <laughs> that's it maybe so it's like a diner or something nearby oh could be yeah is it a place in the car? Save me a seat in the car. Oh, anyway. like a lady he's going to make out with? Maybe. It's a good, I mean, it's a good Long Island name. You know what's funny about that kind of stuff, too? If it, it being a good Long Island name, well, I wouldn't know that it was a good Long Island name. So now it just seems like kind of a weird name because <laughs> angelina is yeah. not a person I, I would happen to have met meet a lot of angelas uh-huh meet some angies <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that i've ever had the good pleasure of meeting an angelina but i bet you can just meet a ton of them in long island yeah i bet you would i only know an Ange. yeah and then, and so you only know them by their nickname so you're like are you angela or angie which is Ange, i guess yeah Ange. Angelina, save a place for me. I've been living someone else's life, and now I got to be free. Thematically consistent. Living uh, one, of, one of his parents' lives. Yeah. Somebody's not pulling their weight. Yeah, someone's Turn your, This is great. Turn your transistor on and <laughs> let the music play. Now, for you kids... <laughs> Did anyone call it a transistor? It was a transistor radio. Yeah. Now, a lot of people for short would say radio. Yeah. Would anyone say transistor for short? Well. Is that even before our time? Well, here's an interesting dink, I guess. I happen to be mm -hmm. listening to oldies, and there's a song called and it's got to be from the 50s, called Transistor Sister. Wow. And, this, and it kind of goes, Transistor Sister, Transistor Sister. Bah, bah, bah. Terrible song. Um, yeah. But it's all about his sister being really into the, the rock and roll. And, and it's called Transistor wow. Sister. So I guess people did use, I don't know how common it was but i guess it makes sense when you were like really taken with these newfangled transistors and thought they were neat sure that tracks where you're like you know what's great not only can you listen to the radio but it might set your house on fire 
It kind of reminds me of when uh, early on people would say, uh, oh, I got a cellular phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you remember the first time you talked on a cell phone? No. I can. Definitely wasn't mine. Yep, it was not mine for sure. It was probably a flip phone of some kind. The first one I talked on was a brick. Oh, and, yeah. And it was... The Wall Street one? Yeah. It was a giant-ass thing. And it was in my buddy's car, um, Eric Edwards, uh, who you may know from uh, Problem Child 2 and a couple other <laughs> fine films that he was in. Oh, and Sergeant Bilko. He was in Sergeant Bilko. Oh, fantastic. Steve Martin. Uh, he was the fat guy in Sergeant Bilko, and he is now the thin guy with a nice child. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he's doing great. An upgrade. Yeah, lovely wife. Um, I'm, but I'm gonna, he was I'm happy right there. Tell the rest of the story. Definitely tell the rest of the story, but I'm gonna pee. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so I will, I'll be able to hear you. Okay, so uh, <laughs> while Alex pees, um, my friend at the time, hustler, always a hustler, just because he was, and by that I mean a hardworking man trying to make his career work. And we were in his dumb car, terrible car, but he had this cell phone, which back then, usually you would think, oh, so you're a millionaire, so you got a phone in your car, but it was because he was a PA and he was on call all the time for whatever, it was this Western that was on TV briefly because Young Ones was a popular movie or young guns, not young ones, young guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was some TV show that tried to sort of do a TV version of that, which is silly because you, no one's going to go, oh, well, let's watch this thing with actors I don't know. Right. About this movie that was popular because it had all these hot dudes. Right. Similar, but worse. Thank yeah. You. But uh, yeah, he had a cell phone and he let me call my wife to say hello and nice. it was literally that dumb thing guess where i'm calling you from very excited <laughs> that was the first call everybody made yep i'm calling from a thing that's mostly a battery because of course <laughs> that's what it was this giant brick of a phone yes oh my weighty God. by the way even at the time it, it's not like at the time yeah. you would have went Oh, it's so, even then you knew it was heavy. Yeah. You're like, oh, this isn't going to last. Yeah. Nobody's going to carry this around, this hot brick. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, great. Wow. You can make a four-minute call, and it only costs you $800. <laughs> uh, the first thing I remember was that uh, in Comedy Corner, John Fourier did some stand-up one day. Uh, in 1985 or 86 sure and he said uh, his joke was i just got one of those new cellular phones i left it in my car and the next day i went out there and i had forty thousand of them which i thought was great most of the audience did what you're doing oh cellular okay. yeah yeah okay. He, we, <laughs> it was really funny to watch that joke, eat it, and then get it yourself and be like, oh, I get it, but I know why it ate shit. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing about a joke like that, too. Um, he was a young in stand up at that time, anyway. So, right? You know, the yeah. girl was stand up. So, it's something you learn as you go along that even if people got that joke, no one was going to go, ah, ha, 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 ah. that because that's so, in that sense, it's a bad joke for stand up. Yes, it would be a good joke if your aspiration was to write for Reader's Digest. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is humor more than it is comedy. Yeah, um, which by the way is no longer my aspiration. Give oh, no, dream. what happened? A dream. Uh, you have I, those touching stories about life in the military. Yeah. 
are you going to do with them? I'm now more hoping to write cheers and jeers. That's now. Oh, great. I applied, but uh, as a jeer specialist. Yeah. They're like, no, you have to do, you have to be able to do both. Yeah. And, yeah. I was like, I'm sorry, but all I have is jeers. Yeah, that is not my skill set. I don't. I can give you the hell out of jeers, though, because I make up for it. I'll split a paycheck with someone. Nope. <laughs> you know, if there's a guy who only does cheers, he's actually the intolerable one. Yeah, it would be so hard to share an office. A guy who does. I assume well, they'd give us an office, right? Well, yeah, you're doing cheers and jeers, of course. Yeah. You have I, an office. Yeah. I'd probably give you one of those like fancy electric typewriters. Oh, yeah. Perhaps a brother. <laughs> the old brother Correctronic. I still have a, one. And I don't know why I won't throw it away, but I just won't. <laughs> I keep don't. thinking it's going to somehow magically become worth money. Oh, yeah. Keep that probably telling, won't happen. Yeah, I keep telling myself, this will be the thing. This will be like, like a... Yeah. Uh, Somebody like Tom Hanks will get into the electric typewriters. <laughs> right. Like Colin Hanks. Colin Hanks will get into electric <laughs> typewriters. <laughs> That'd be a great bit for him. Oh, that's really a funny. Oh, shoot. I wish you were on SNL now because that's a funny thing to pitch <laughs> as a sketch where he plays. Tom Hanks is playing Colin Hanks. And it's just little things are different. Just little things. But like a little cleaner, a little better, yeah. <laughs> a little sharper. He has type 2 diabetes. Oh! <laughs> Tom Hanks would do that joke if you pitched it to him. He'd be cool with it. Oh, yeah. At some that point. I, I love, by the way, when anybody on... Go ahead. No, I was waiting to hear what you love. I love when anybody who's like Republican crazy person... Yeah. tries to get people on board with bad mouthing tom hanks it's the funniest thing like you're not yeah. going to sell anybody on this they've been driven into some weird corners that's you're, no one and the vast majority there i promise you there's somebody who during the insurrection what, terrible person was like now oh, i like tom hanks for sure oh, yeah they went back to their hotels in dc and a lot of them watched that fucking news of the world yeah <laughs> they're like oh, yeah, i like this guy i sure hate democracy though yeah I, so tom hanks tom hanks love tom hanks democracy boo <laughs> turn your transistor on and let the music play i guess i'll do the second half since there's not a fourth thing yeah that sounds good I like this lyric a lot. I try to keep the family satisfied, but there's got to be more to life than just try, try, try. That's a great lyric. That's uh, I, it was Yoda. Yoda said that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it is a great lyric. And the how funny that it is so economical, but because you've got talk about women, women and lie, lie, lie. But there's got to be more to life than just try, try, try is a nice echo of that earlier rhyme. And I'll uh, tell you what, similar sentiment. similar sentiment. And there have been songs where you wrote a hell of a lot more lyrics and did not come close to this. Yes. I feel like there should be a fourth verse, but maybe there shouldn't. I think it's all there. Yeah. Other than letting us know who Angelina is <laughs> or where the place is. I feel like it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the general sensation of, <laughs> you know, little Geo and Angelina are people and places I go to to get away from my overly adult responsibilities in this weird Long Island house. Yeah, you're right. You know what's you're a damn genius because you just pointed out something really great. I felt like I knew more about little Geo, but I don't really. <laughs> he's, just he just, he's just a guy he knows and 
The only difference is I know exactly what him and little Gio are doing. They're getting drunk on the street. Right. And I don't know exactly what him and Angelina are doing. Oh, she's got the radio. But she's got a radio, and a lot of it's implied. Yeah, you're going to go somewhere and listen to the radio, I assume. Yeah. Would it be better? So the last lyric is, it's just a half a mile away, which is great. Would it be a little better if after it's just a half a mile away, he said he just had a lyric where he went, and we fucked. Would that be good? <laughs> It would be good in some ways. Yeah. Um, Because it would be hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I feel like that would be the the lyric Tim Robinson would come up with. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What a nice song. What a just a nice song. It's a nice song. He doesn't uh, succumb to the tendency to over explain everything. Yeah. and tell you how he feels about it and he's not yelling at anybody not yelling at anybody he's not better than anybody wow there's a lot of things he does in that are billy joel isms that i love because i love me some billy joel but he doesn't happen to do the any of them in this he's just barely complaining yep try to keep the family satisfied there's got to be more to life not like and it's miserable and killing me have you heard this expression? It's an expression I like. Uh, and it, it'll be, sometimes it's a work expression. Sometimes it's a family expression. It can be like a creative expression. Um, and now that it occurs to me, it's not an expression. It's a sentiment. Ah. Anyway, how, how about if I keep explaining the thing I'm going to say, but never say it. <laughs> uh, but people will say, don't just, you know, I don't like that you complain and don't at least try to come up with a solution. Yes. Happens at work a lot. Happens in a lot of Billy Joel songs. Not in this one. He has a solution. Yeah, the song is about the solution. Yep. And that's why it doesn't come across as complaining because he's just letting you know and stuff at this other place, we think home, home makes the most sense, is a little much. And also, it's a valid complaint. It can't just be try, try, try. No. You got to cut me a break. I, you got to let me just be a person for a minute. Yeah. And g- good news. I have a place to do that. And yep. I'm going. And Angelina has a radio. She has a radio. It's, yeah, it's a very rare Billy Joel song about a solution <laughs> instead <laughs> of uh, whining about a problem. Yeah. And now, sometimes I've said of a Billy, I've said this in another episode. Sometimes I feel like, ooh, this is a first draft and it's a critique. Right. This feels like a first draft nailed it. Yeah. It really does. Wrote the thing and there was, just wasn't a change that was necessary. Other it than, all, and yeah. we fucked at the end. <laughs> other than that, um, she's definitely in the club remix. <laughs> But it does feel like I can imagine him trying to write a fourth verse and slaving over it for a few weeks and then being like, wait, wait, I don't, it doesn't work because I don't need it. That's why I can't figure out what it should be. I uh, all already there was doing this live show with some friends, a sketch show, and I wrote this sketch called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Jekyll. And the premise yeah. was he releases a guy who's very similar to himself. Right. So that was the premise. And it was like a six page sketch. And on page five, it had a really great button. And then there was this other page. And our friend Paul, he goes, I'm going to do some editing. And he went, and it literally stopped at the end of the page before. And I was like, ah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah the easiest edit and i i couldn't tell you what was on that last page because once it was torn up i was like yes i don't know why i wrote the extra stuff yeah oh it happens all the time it's such a delight when you figure it out yeah and such a bummer when people don't (laughs) yep you can certainly watch snl and be like oh i that sketch is already over stop talking why are they they're doing more things (laughs) what a terrible idea they would always 
every Christmas show and every sketch group I've ever been in, I would always write a sketch about um, a Christmas Carol because uh -huh. I just love a Christmas Carol and I would think of different jokes. And many times people would go, the sketch is good, but why do you always have to do the part at the beginning where you're eating the soup? <laughs> it's like, because to me, that's funny to include that part, but you guys are right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, was, what's funny to us a lot of times is uh, doing something that uh, fights the form. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny to us. Yep. But audiences do hate it. Yeah, for sure. They know the form. And you know what? You're being generous because sometimes what's funny to me is, and you you have to just catch your check your instinct is what's funny to me is doing this thing that I know will make people pretty mad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what if I, I'm going to do something that's not funny? What if I waste your comedy time? Show? <laughs> That'll make people mad. <laughs> and then when I do something funny, they won't like it as much because they're yeah. mad at me. They will not forgive me because I haven't <laughs> earned that. <laughs> now, the trick, by the way, for anybody who wants to do comedy, earn their trust first, and sometimes they'll like that you did the other thing. Yes. But first, but earn sure your... <laughs> first, Definitely check. Earn their damn trust. <laughs> now, I mentioned canon earlier. You something did. was canon, which is, it is canon that Billy Joel was neighbors with Peter Parker. Is that what I was saying? Or that yep. Peter Parker grew up in his neighborhood. Yep. Um, this particular clue behind me could be considered not entirely canon in a particular way. And that's a clue because let me show you a little more of the picture. Uh, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Isn't that a cute dog? That is a cute dog with a loaf of French bread. Yeah. The bread's not important. That's just get the bread out of your mouth, out of your mind, not out of its mouth. Um, what's important is the dog. The dog. And the location. Hmm. Looking at the picture, I see some New York-y looking buildings back there. Yeah. I feel like we might be in Central Park. Yep. There's a dog in Central Park. Yes. Hmm. And it doesn't matter what kind of dog. I don't think it matters too much. Um, but it is a specific dog. I mean, it doesn't matter for the clue. But because <laughs> I just had to get a picture. But it is referencing a specific dog. Huh. Yeah. And um and if it's too so it's non-canon and uh, um non-canon. And what would make it non-canon? Um if it were a song that is not on an album? Sure, that could be it. Could be a not a Billy Joel song. There you go. <laughs> Not a Billy, not a Billy Joel written song. Oh, uh, interesting. Perhaps sung by. Um, you, there is a. He certainly played a dog in the movie Oliver. Yeah, uh, where they sang a song about Central Park. Um, there's what was the song? We just listened to one of his songs from that movie. Ah. It was like, uh, New York is great, or something. <laughs> like exactly what you'd think it would be. I like walking around New York. Here's a list of things you'll see. Dogs in Central Park. Well, you more like, or less. My man is making the pizza. <laughs> Here goes a cab that's really loud. What was the song called? Do you remember? It uh, had to do with his laissez-faire attitude. Yes. 
In fact, the title references his laissez-faire attitude. Right. God damn it. And it's a question he asks in the title. Why should I worry? Why should I worry? And he's a dog. He does. For a minute, I'm in Central Park. Then he references. Then I could be uh, over at Yankee Stadium. I don't know where he is next. But... <laughs> right. I'm in Times Square getting the bagel. <laughs> now, I picked that originally because I assumed he had written the song. He did not. Oh, interesting. Because was... I assumed that, too, when I heard it. And damn it, didn't they nail it? They really? <laughs> yes. I wonder how you'd feel about that if you were him. Yeah, they like, nailed we wrote, uh, we wrote a song that sounds like you. I'm like, oh, am I so common, predictable? So they, man, it's those Disney writers because it's a couple of Disney guys who write those kinds huh. of songs that, you know, you, but you've ever seen those documentaries where it's like, they're singing, you know, super califragilistic, expialidocious, and they've got terrible voices. But oh, yeah. they're going, and then at this part, she'll go, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, but it'll go up. And you think, they've got great music minds, but monstrous voices. It's, it's very kind of, weird when that happens. Yeah. How can they even hear it in their head properly? If they can't sing at all. Yep. Because their brains work. It's a weird skill they have. It's super weird. It's super quite specific. quite dope, actually. And these two dudes went, well, imagine a guy who could sing a little better than us. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but so I assumed he had written it. I've got full credit. And um, that will be, I'll include a clip of this at the end oh, yes by all means because we can't pick this for a song that we analyze right because uh canon yeah we only do canon songs songs about the show canon <laughs> <laughs> this is surprisingly a lot a lot of songwriters were inspired oh, yeah. by the show canon a lot of punk songs yeah they love that show Not a lot of lyrics but all right yeah uh, um, amazing so you got it, and uh, and wow, what a nice picture too! Just what a nice, calming little picture. It's a lovely. I don't think I know that body of water, but it must be on the south end of the park. It's the one near that loaf of bread. Oh sure, you know the one. Yeah, yeah bread pond. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do, should we do trivia, and then I'll tell you what song I picked, or? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Now. I should say, you're never going to get this. Okay. So you're <laughs> asking me anything? <laughs> what kind of style you like? <laughs> um, what is the title of the song with which Billy Joel or a band he was in charted? I will say it topped out at number 112 on the charts. Wow. Was was this that metal band he was in? No, this is that not would, Attila. That would be amazing if somehow they charted. <laughs> um, that would be amazing. Wow. So that Billy Joel charted or a band he was in. Mm -hmm. Wow. You, appearance of any kind you sir are correct i don't think i could okay wait a minute was it um uh bang a gong and he was in that super group with the rest of duran duran and our... <laughs> what was the name of that super group that's a good trivia question I was, by the way, this is how bad my memory is. I was like, it was the members of Duran Duran, and I was really going to say not a funny joke with Arnold Palmer. It was <laughs> Arnold Palmer. Um, what was the name of that group? Uh, like Tin something? Something to do with Tin? Why do I think that? Um, I think you just like Tin. 
I do like tin. It is on the periodic table of elements. Indeed. Underappreciated. <laughs> by the way, you periodically throughout the time I've known you have referenced tin. So I know you like tin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a sketch one time where we needed a fake commercial and you made up a guy named come to Gary's house of tin. We sell tin. <laughs> and I laughed so hard. I thought it was such a funny thing to imagine a store that sold That's tin. tin. That's all they sold. <laughs> Pretty great. Yeah. No memory of that. Yeah, very funny thing you did. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yay. All so, right. Uh, all right. Uh, the, the Hassles. He was in a band called The Hassles. Wow. And was he a child at this point, more or less? <laughs> I feel like this was after Attila. Okay. When he was like, okay, I'm actually doing actual music and not fucking around with my dumb friend. Right. And posing with meat. <laughs> the Hassles hit number 112 in 1967. Oh, You've God. Got Me Humming is the name of the song. Wow. Got Me Humming. Did have you listened to it? I did not find it. Wow. I without even looking at it, and this is me being because I'm very sharp and intuitive. I bet it sucks. I bet you're right. <laughs> I bet it sucks so bad. You got me humming is such a generic. Wow. Wait, let's we're gonna break the law right now because you ever wondered did what actors and actresses do when they have to get shape really ad. fast for a movie? Let's hear a few bars. Oh wow. really racist <laughs> that is five white dudes uh stealing motown wow wow that's pretty terrible it's pretty terrible fascinating the beginning is dirty right yeah and gross yeah not hot dirty that was gross weird dirty <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's so you know you've always you've asked oh, what it, what song would you think of when you that to you is the typical Billy Joel song? You've said that before, right? Right. I got to tell you that song is one I think. What's a typical Hassles song? That's the one that comes to mind. That is straight up the gut for Hassles. <laughs> Bad song. Oh God, that was awful. Have you heard any? um of i don't know if they were called rory storm i can't remember the beatles before they were the beatles the song oh, no. they're bad yeah they're bad right yeah they're bad it's the same thing it's the same thing before yeah and it, and they were playing skiffle <laughs> what the fuck yeah is that? so it was a version of rock and roll that was popular in England at the time called Skiffle. Oh. And it's not good. It sounds terrible just off the name. Yeah. It was just it's like so like new wave is essentially is pop. But right. we call it new wave because it has this certain flavor of its own and you either like it or you hate it. Sure. And then Skiffle was like that but it was like regional. Oh. And it was just that was their version of rock and roll probably because at that point, to hear rock and roll, you were importing it. Right. And you weren't surrounded by it. So you were going to create your own version, in this case, without nearly enough influences. 
because <laughs> you didn't really get it. But and then What's somehow the Beatles are, steal from someone. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite Beatles things that's not music is there's an interview with both with, I think it was McCartney and Lennon. They were talking how much they loved Elvis and they talked about how, when they were young, they used to say, I, how did, how did he write all these songs? <laughs> yeah. And there's a later moment when they're disappointed. Funny story. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the song I picked, and I think you're going to swear we've talked about it too, um, but we haven't. It's from Glass Houses. Okay. You may be right. You may be right. We did not talk about it, huh? Nope. But doesn't it feel like we have? It does. And am I wrong? <laughs> I don't think I am. But I'm aware of. Although, if you are, it's kind of great to do it twice. Yeah. You may be right. Boy, I don't... Yeah, no, I don't think so. Okay. Remember how I found you there, alone in your electric chair. Wait, is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think we have. You know what I think we did? Now that I'm piecing it together in my mind, because I went and I looked at our at our discography, uh -huh. and it's not there. Now it occurs to me that it's been a picture clue. Oh yes, and that was a very long discussion about that picture clue. Yes, so it would be easy to mistake that for a whole podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you may be right. Hmm. Yeah. I like it. And uh, I felt like it was time for a hit. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. Way, All right. I love it. That way Tom can justify listening to another episode. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes, bud. Tom, as you can, as you may recall, was listening to every episode where we've talked about anything off of an innocent man. Oh, uh, right. Yes, yes. Because that is his Billy Joel album. Okay. That's like where he's like, so that's where I learned about Billy Joel. Okay. That's fair. Late in the game. Yeah. That was his Billy Joel. Hey, what do you think of all this beard, by the way? Look at that. I was going to say, it's really coming in. It is. And it comes in more each time that I go, ah, forget it and shave it. And then when I let it come in the next time, I'm like, oh, there's more beard now. This is great. I think blonde beards are terrible. And so I'm so glad it's gray. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 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 it's a nice combo. Problem with a blonde beard is unless it's really thick. So literally, unless you're Mike Love in the Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. Unless it's super I thick. 22. What happened? We have a thing where uh, when it's 922 and we notice it, we shout it. Oh. Yeah, it's Sue's lucky number. 922 is? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mine is 911. No. <laughs> it's just you keeping it? Yeah. Even after what happened? Or is that when you started it? Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I wasn't in New York. <laughs> that sure is lucky for me. Yeah, I guess so. It's not crazy. It's all under <laughs> how you look at things. <laughs> Oh. oh, awful. awful. If we don't get sued for playing the hassles, <laughs> we'll get murdered for that. Like two days after, which by the way, I just happened to have, have a show. Maybe, maybe it wasn't two days. And hopefully I didn't do a show two days later, but <laughs> I happened to have a place to do comedy and people were still raw as they should be. Yes. And this one comic... I'm still friends with him to this day because I, he just has the worst instincts. <laughs> I think maybe I'm still friends. With, I'm friends with him because he's actually a good guy, but I think I'm also friends with him because I can look at him go and go, my instincts aren't that bad. It's nice to have that around. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have done that. 
Yeah. Clearly, I must be good at this. Yeah, because... Based on how bad this guy is. And the joke, not funny. <laughs> there are funny 9-11 observations. Sure. That you've heard comics make that you went, okay, there's been enough time. I can see this funny observation. Sure. Not that guy. No? What was the joke? Um, no. Not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> No nope. well, proof right there. Yeah. No. It was can unpleasant. I tell you, can I say this? Uh, yeah. That's a good instinct. <laughs> it was unpleasant. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people felt like they had to try to do something and they were all wrong. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you were right. You had to try to do something, which is a joke about something else to ease the pain. Yeah. Never realize what the job is. Yeah, do that. Uh, I've done, I'm doing a Steve Martin thing in my act now, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, I'm doing all this material. No. Um, <laughs> no, I decided, hey, we need his, he talked about in Born Standing Up how he didn't do any political comedy right. as his own version of that, of a reaction to how political everything was during the Nixon years. Sure. So in my bulk of my act, I'm like, yeah, people don't need to hear my take. They just need to have a good time. And uh, it's working out good. I'm actually having better sets. So there you go. Because <laughs> I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy to do the political jokes. I can write them. That's fine. But yeah, it's not where your heart is. Yeah. All right, yeah. everybody. You did a good job. Um, <laughs> yeah, you hung in there. I, uh, we did not do what did Alex order this week? Can I tell you what we ordered? Go ahead. It was Chinese. Damn it. Yeah. <sighs> Man, there's always next week. You're not going to order Chinese food next week. No. <laughs> <laughs>